Welcome back everyone. Let's continue our discussion of ggplot. Uh, just to maintain continuity, what I'll do is I'll repeat the last couple of slides we had for the last session and then we'll pick up from there. Okay, so before we start the session, let's do some preparatory steps. First of all, of course, you have to load the appropriate libraries and also read the files before you can start. Uh, from the previous session, you know that we installed a package called Tidyverse, which is actually a collection of several packages, uh, which all fit well into our course. So we already installed the package in the last class. So all you have to do now is to load the package by the command library Tidyverse. Of course, you already have this command available in the command file that I had given to you for this session. So what I recommend is at this point in time, uh, go download the file, load it into RStudio, uh, and then, of course, load also the, the appropriate data file, which you did load in the last class. Uh, and then you'll be able to follow along quite comfortably. I strongly recommend that uh, you look at the code uh, on the slide, try to understand it, and pause the video abundantly. You know, you don't have to just continuously listen to the video. Pause the video, look at the code, make sure you understand the code, then go into our studio, run the code, see how it behaves, and uh, like I also suggested earlier, uh, try to play around a little bit with the code, make some changes, but don't be afraid if the code breaks. You know, after all, you have the correct code available anyway, so make mistakes, learn from that. Okay, uh, so uh, of course the next step is for us to simply load the file, and I have already given you this file, uh, fuelefficiency.csv, so load it, and then we're going to do a lot of, uh, continue our ggplot uh, experience with fuel efficiency.csv and also with some other uh, data sets that are already inside R and we'll use that to practice. Okay, uh, so again today you're going to learn a lot of new techniques with ggplot. All of these are very important, very useful and I think very exciting techniques. Uh, but like I said, pay careful attention to the code, pause the video uh, liberally and play around with it. Have fun with, with the uh, material. Okay. Uh, so here we've got uh, two graphs which have been plotted and the question is will they look the same or will they look different? Explain. Okay, so the first thing says ggplot, data is mpg, mapping is uh, aesthetics, x equal display, y equals highway miles, that is highway miles, and then jump point and jump smooth. Okay, so if you look at this, you should by now be able to take a look at this and indicate what kind of a graph will be plotted. Okay, so first of all, we are saying use the MPG data frame, which contains a bunch of cars and a bunch of details about each of the cars. And what we are saying is the X axis is going to contain the displacement of the engine of the car. And the Y axis is going to contain the highway mileage of the car. Okay, so that's the X and Y axes. They have been determined. Okay, but of course, just stating the axis doesn't really tell the system what to do, what kind of graph to plot. And we already know that with ggplot, that's going to come next. Okay, so we say plus. And remember from the last class that the plus has to be at the end of this line, not at the start of the next line, because otherwise, that's a complete command and R will stop. And of course, when you just have a ggplot with no aesthetics, uh, with no geoms, then you won't get anything to see. It really won't plot anything. Okay, so we say plus geom point. And again, from the last class, you know that when we say geom point, what we get is a scatter plot. And then we say plus once again, because we are continuing to add more layers to the plot. And then when we say geom smooth, what you get is a smooth line running through all of these points. Okay, so if you run this line of code, uh, this not line of code, this these three lines of code, what you expect to see is a scatter plot with a smooth line for the, you know, with the x-axis being the displacement, y-axis being the highway miles. Uh, and of course, uh, the plot, the points, since we have not said anything about the color of the points, the points will simply have the default color of black, right? So if I go into R Studio and then I run that code, this one, this is the line of code here. So if I run it, and of course, as expected, this is what we got, right? We got a scatter plot with a smooth line. The, plots are the, the points in the scatter plot are black, 
because we didn't specify any color. And of course, when we said geom smooth, we just said geom smooth. So you get the smooth line and by default, you also get the confidence, 95% confidence interval band around it. Okay, so this is what we expect to get with our first chart. Let's look at the second. Here we said ggplot and we specified no arguments to the ggplot call itself. But then inside geom point, we said data is mpg and x is displacement, y is highway, plus inside smooth, we said exactly the same thing, right? So obviously what it's going to do is the ggplot is not really going to plot anything. When you say geom point and you specify the data and then you specify the, uh, specify the mappings, the aesthetics x and y, it's going to give you a scatter plot. And then plus you're seeing geom smooth with again the data and the same uh, x and y axis mappings. So that's going to give you a smooth line. And since we said geom smooth and we didn't say anything about SE, it's going to give the smooth line and it's also given, going to give you the confidence intervals. Okay, which means that these two plots are going to plot exactly the same information. Okay, so let's confirm that. So now I can run this code. Sure enough, we got exactly the same output from this as well. Okay, so clearly both of these are going to produce the same plots. But which one do we prefer? Okay, now the one that we prefer is actually the first one because anything that is common to some or all of the geoms, it's a good idea to put that inside ggplot itself. Okay, so what you put inside ggplot by default applies to all the geoms unless the geoms themselves override that con consideration, right? So if, for example, geom point uh, overrides something, right? For example, geom point may override uh, the y-axis or the x-axis or even the data set itself, in which case it will plot something else. But since we have specified nothing here, our ggplot is simply going to say, okay, let me pull it up from what they said for ggplot and then use that here, right? So it has the idea that whatever you define for ggplot automatically flows through to all the geoms that you use unless the geoms themselves override them. Okay, so clearly this is a more succinct way of saying the same thing. So this is what we would prefer, right? Somebody reading the code clearly knows, okay, uh, geom point has no argument, geom smooth has no arguments. Therefore, the arguments are all coming from ggplot so they can read that once and understand it. Whereas here, you have to read the whole thing carefully and at the end of it, you realize, oh my God, both of these are exactly the same. Okay, so it's not a, not a great idea to du duplicate stuff like this. Okay, so both will produce the same result. However, the first way is preferable. Okay, so the next problem says, write our code to get these two graphs. Okay, so you're getting this and this. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a scatter plot followed by a smooth line. This is pretty easy, not very different from what we have seen uh, in the previous question. Only point might be that the, the points look a little big, bigger than usual. Okay, which means the size of the points is a little bit bigger. That's one point, uh, one thing that's different here. And in, the only difference between this plot and this plot is that in this plot, instead of having one smooth line, we have three smooth lines. Okay, and from our prior experience, we know that these smooth lines really are, uh, you know, the, the smooth lines corresponding to the drive of the car, right? So that is based on graphs that we have already seen, quite a few of them. Uh, based on what we've already seen, we know that, uh, for example, this is from the previous class, we know that these three graphs represent the drive. Okay, so with that, uh, with that in mind, so here, we need to draw the smooth lines for each kind of drive. Notice that, of course, there is no legend here. Notice that there is also no legend here. Okay, so that's a slight, because whenever you do any kind of uh, grouping and then have the plots by subgroups are, are always ggplot shows you the legends but here we don't see the legend okay so that's the difference and also you see that all these three plots are all these three lines are of the same color there's no distinguishing feature so if you look at it you really don't know which one each of these lines is okay this is not a preferable approach but i'm showing this to you just so that you understand something about how ggplot works and to avoid this kind of thing. Okay, so let's look at the code first. Let's think about it a little bit. So first of all, one thing we have noticed for this plot is that uh, this is a scatter plot of display and highway. 
uh, I mean sorry displacement and highway miles right which means uh, you will have x equals displacement y equals highway and since it's a scatter plot we're going to have geom smooth oh, sorry geom point and there is a smooth line so clearly we know that there is also a geom smooth involved okay and uh, the smooth line is the default line default color so we really don't have to say anything about this right so the question that comes is where do you put the uh, aesthetics of x and y of course you can put it inside each of the geoms uh, but then what's going to happen is that you'll be duplicating it because both of them have the same uh, x and y aesthetics so clearly you can put the x and y aesthetics inside ggplot itself and uh, just have geom sm smooth and geom point only thing is for geom point we want to increase the size of the point uh, by a little bit okay so this first plot for for this one that is the plot on the left hand side uh, we just chose to include uh, the data and the aesthetics x and y all in ggplot itself okay that is because the aesthetics are common to both geom point and geom smooth however we could not simply say geom point and geom smooth because we had to say the size of the point is slightly bigger so i said here size equals 3 okay now remember when you're having a fixed size or fixed anything then you don't put it inside the aesthetics you just put it directly right but x and y and other things for example color if you want separate colors based on some other variable then you put it inside the aesthetic but now since the size is going to be fixed for all of them i put it put it outside the aesthetic okay and smooth remember the smooth line here has no confidence band which means you have to say sc equals false if you said sc equals true which is the default then it will show the confidence interval 95 percent confidence interval clearly since that is missing you have to say sc equals false okay so again i said note is note that size is not within the aesthetic but it's just uh, an argument to geom point itself okay so the second plot the x and y are still exactly the same so you can put all of that inside ggplot point size is 3 so we'll put it right here but here for the smooth you wanted to do the smooth lines for each value of the drive variable right remember the cars can have a front wheel drive where drv is f rear wheel drive where drv is r and four wheel drive where drv is four right so uh, you can do that but since we just want the lines to be drawn by the drive but we don't want the line to take on any different color or any such thing in that case what you can do is you can say group group equals okay then what you're saying is you know take each of these points first of all group them by the value of the drive variable for each point and then draw a separate smooth line for each group that you have okay the thing the reason you did not have any legend here is because you said group right if you had said color then you would have got a legend here you just said group so all it says is okay i'll group and i'll do the smooth line but i'm not going to do anything else okay so that's that's the difference uh, that's the effect of using group as opposed to uh, color or line type or something else okay in which case you're saying you know determine the quality of the line based on some other variable and of course when you do that it will also show you a legend but since if you just say group then there is no legend of course here also there are no smooth lines uh, there are no confidence intervals so we say se equals false